Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, as the title and description probably already told you, we're going to be developing an app that can read in a an Excel file that's already in CSV format. And what this app will allow you to do is update that file and then resave it. Now we're gonna be doing all of this in Streamlit on the left over here and the app's gonna be on the right over here. And we're gonna be working with really just Streamlit and Pandas. If you don't know about Streamlit and you don't know about Pandas, I've got two separate series on these two different libraries. They're both very useful. Streamlit is used for making apps very easily, and Pandas is used for loading in uh, tabular data that we associate oftentimes with Excel. The Excel data that we're working with is nothing complex. It's two different columns, its name and its age, and our goal is to have an app by the end of this video that, uh, oh, and I misspelled Lisa, there we go, uh, that will allow us to go ahead and read in this information and then add it to it and then resave it. So this app is just gonna be very simple. It's gonna allow us to load in a data frame essentially, manipulate it within Python and in our app, uh, and a user will do all this all in Streamlit, and then resave it. And this comes at the request of a subscriber, and I thought this would be a fun video for this Monday. And I'm gonna be doing some live coding here. I do not have anything prepared. I know that I can do this because I've done something similar in the past for another subscriber on another video series on doing this kind of all in the terminal, but I thought it'd be fun to redo this kind of a video using Streamlit. So let's go ahead and import our necessary libraries. We're gonna be importing Streamlit as ST, which is the Pythonic standard way to do it. And we're gonna be importing uh, pandas as PD. I don't envision us needing any more libraries other than this. Um, let's go ahead first and give our, our little app a name. So we're gonna call this st.title. And we're just gonna call it the Excel update app. And we can save that and it's always good to make sure and run the app and make sure everything is loading loading kind of correctly. So the way I envision this is that we're going to have a form on the left hand side and the sidebar. And what that form will allow us to do is it'll allow us to give the users the ability to insert a new uh, username and a new age for that user. So it'll kind of have all that same information and then they can hit submit. And the data frame will be displayed in the middle over here and that data frame will be updated. So the first thing I want to do is I want to bring in that data. So let's go ahead and just load up the data. So we're gonna say df is equal to pd.read csv. And again, if you don't understand the pandas syntax here, do check out my series on pandas. It'll help you understand what's happening. But I'm going to presume that you have a little bit of knowledge about pandas. And we're gonna basically read in this data uh, names.csv file. So we're gonna say data backslash uh, names.csv. And let's go ahead and instead of writing out and testing in the terminal and making sure everything loads correctly, we're gonna just print it off inside of the Streamlit app. So we can say st.write here, or we can say st.table. We can do really kind of a couple different things here. I like to use table sometimes, just because when I load it up in the Streamlit app, it doesn't actually have uh, a really tight width that I have to uh, specify. So it, it displays the whole width of the app, which I kind of prefer. And if we load this up, we notice that we have everything loaded as we want to see it. We've got our name, we've got our age, and then we've got our index over here on the left. Let's go ahead and do write though, just so you can kind of see the difference here. If we do write, we see that our tabular data looks kind of like this. And you know what? This user was interested in updating and seeing an Excel file within, um, within uh, the Streamlit app. So maybe this is a better way to kind of display our data. And notice that our Lisa hasn't updated. We're gonna just ignore that for right now and go ahead and move on to adding in some user information. So first what we need to do is we need to give the user the ability to update some kind of a form. So let's go ahead and try and do that right now. So we're gonna say uh, options is gonna be on the right. We're gonna make this equal to st.sidebar. Let's just call this options. We're gonna go ahead and hit save, and I don't think you're gonna see an update right now. And in fact, you don't, because you don't have anything. Okay, and there we go. I was just foolishly not, um, I was trying to create a sidebar, which I didn't have to do. I just needed to write a, develop a header within there. So now that we've got our, our sidebar actually loaded up, we can start to actually do some stuff with our sidebar. So this is where our form is going to sit. And if you're wondering where I found the solution, I just Googled the error real fast and realized I was just creating the sidebar incorrectly. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and start 
kind of developing the as uh, this app a little bit further. So let's go ahead and just rerun. And everything should look nice now. Okay, good, no errors. What we wanna do is we wanna create this form now. So if you ever get stuck with Streamlit, always go to their API reference, and you can find basically everything that you need to find real quickly. So if you wanted to write a form, you could actually just click on this and it gives you all the perfect syntax for writing a form. And it tells you also that you need to actually have your form submit button. So if you follow this syntax, you should be just fine. So let's go ahead and create a form within our sidebar. So we're gonna say st.sidebar and we're going to actually call this um, the options form. And that's gonna be equal to st.sidebar.form. We're gonna call this our options form okay and then we can add to it a couple different parameters so what we want the person to be able to do is to write inside of this form they want we want them to be able to write a username or some kind of a name and we want them to also be able to write and the age so we're going to say user name actually it's yeah let's do it like that and that's going to be equal to st uh, or options form and then what we want to do is we want to give them the ability to input some kind of some kind of text. So if we go to the API again, we can scroll around and we can figure out where we can actually allow the user to, to input data. And if you look under the input section, you'll find that you can just do text input like so. So we can do text underscore input. And then we can give this some kind of a name. So we're going to say um, username. Why not? Keep it the same. And we can do the same thing again for user age. And if we go and we run the app right now, we're going to notice that we get an error. And what's really handy here is that we've got this uh, error. It kind of explains what we need to do. And it tells us that we need to actually have this form submit button. This allows for you to actually use the form correctly. And again, if you don't understand what's happening here, I have a whole video that explains forms within Streamlit and why they're useful and when to use them. So let's go ahead and call this our submit button why not uh, add data let's call it add data and that's going to be equal to our options form not that and we can go ahead and run this and we've now got our submit button here let's go ahead and change this a little bit and just change this to name so it corresponds better to that and age okay so it corresponds to that and what we want to do is we want when this button's hit uh, so if add data, so if it's clicked, then what we want to do is we want to execute some sort of a command. Now for right now, let's just go ahead and make sure that this button and this form work. So we're going to say st.write, and we want to write in user uh, name and uh, user age. And so this will allow us to just kind of write out that data. So we can say um, mark, and he is... 73. We hit submit and the data is printed out. So we know now that our form works. We know now that we've loaded in the data and that works. Now comes the time to use this submit button to add to this data. And then we can give the user the ability to save that new data frame. So let's go ahead and first do step one, which is adding this data to this data frame. So if we've loaded everything in correctly, we now need to just essentially add to or append to this data frame right here. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of that, what we just wrote out. And we need to actually now we'll manipulate our data. So we're going to say df is equal to df.append, and we're going to append in some data. So let's make a new dictionary real fast called new data. And this is going to have just two keys. It's going to have name, which is going to be equal to Username, again, we're corresponding our dictionary to the way this is structured over here. And we're gonna have age, which is gonna be equivalent to our user age. And let's go ahead and do st.write new data and make sure that new data is printing off correctly. And it's printing off as we want to see it. Ignore this error. I just haven't done anything with this command right here. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and actually write that in to our df append. But we're going to have to do one thing first. Um, this is a text input, which means that this is a string and not an integer. And what we need is we need that converted into an integer first, because that's how pandas is reading that type of data. And now we see that it is, in fact, an integer being printed out because of the, the bluish syntax here. That's good. 
And so let's go ahead now and add in our new data. And I think you have to do something like index equals false. Uh, pandas should give me that error though. And tell me what I need to write in. Uh, ignore index is equal to true. There we go. Ignore, ignore index equals true. So if we do this, we should now be able to print our off df. We should be able to print off our new data frame. And in fact, we have. So we've updated our data frame now. We don't really need to write this anymore. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So if we have successfully written our new data frame, now really the only step left is to save our data frame. OK, now that we've been able to actually write the data to our Streamlit app, we needed the user just to be able to save it. So instead of writing it off, what we can do is we can say, um, df.2 csv and then we can specify data names dot csv and we can say index is equal to false and let's go ahead and rerun this app and we can add mark into our oh, let's get rid of that we can add mark into our existing thing here there we go now we've got mark there now we can add um, rows and we can say that rows is let's say 55 and we can hit oh, not that we can hit submit and when we hit submit we should be able to rerun the app and reload up that file and in fact we actually see that rose is there um i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this button up here this is something i was playing with to allow a user to kind of have the option to save but what we have now is essentially a streamlit app that allows for you to re uh that allows for you to load in a a data frame from an Excel file and update that Excel file. And again, if we go into our Excel file, you're going to see that it is in fact updated. You can do this also with XLRD if you don't want to work with a CSV file. I find that working with pandas and CSV files are a little bit easier, especially if your data frame is fairly simple and not multiple sheets. This is a great way to do it. But that's how you would actually read in uh, an Excel file, update it within a Streamlit app, and then save it back. Now, with these basics, you can, of course, do a lot more advanced things. You can uh, add in a feature where you could manipulate rows. But these are the basic mechanics. And you see that we be, we've been able to really do it in about 17 lines of code. You could probably tighten this up a little bit more and make it look a little nicer. But for the most part, this is a basic app that allows for you to just do some basic data adding to an existing Excel file. Hopefully you found it useful and helpful. Um, if you get a lot out of this channel, please do like and subscribe down below. I do all of my content here free for everyone. So if you want to also, please do consider supporting it either via Patreon, which a link is in the description down below for, or join the YouTube channel, which there is also a link for that in the description down below. Thank you.